Hey everyone, Andrew here. I've worked with WordPress pretty extensively in the past, and while it holds up as a solid option for a CMS, the support for local development can leave a lot to be desired. A lot of common options require you to install software directly on the machine that you're developing on, like Apache, MySQL, or PHP. Sometimes that can be trivial, but other times it can be frustrating or difficult, especially because OS updates can cause breaking changes to one or more of those dependencies. Instead, my preferred method for local WordPress development is Docker, and I'll show you why. If you're unfamiliar with it, Docker is a software suite that containerizes your websites and web applications. What that means is that all of the code, dependencies, and even operating systems are self-contained into individual units completely separate from the machine that it's running on. You can even have multiple containers or container networks powering different versions of a framework or application, all with different dependencies. And unlike virtual machines, containers are lightweight and faster to spin up and down. The first step, if you haven't done it already, is to install the Docker desktop software. If you're on Mac or Windows, it's as easy as downloading an executable and running through the installer. If you're on Linux, it's only a little more work through the terminal to get it up and running. Once that's done, we can turn our attention to a tool from Docker that we'll be using throughout this video, Compose. This comes pre-installed if you downloaded Docker Desktop on Mac or Windows, but is an additional, straightforward installation if you're on Linux. With Docker and Docker Compose, we can specify what services, or containers, our WordPress site will need. Then we can spin up and manage all of them as a whole to create our local dev environment. The beauty of this is that we can then share this configuration with any machine running Docker and our site will install and run in exactly the same way as on our local computer. Speaking of which, what exactly does WordPress need to run? Well, if we take a look at the documentation, It looks like right now we need PHP version 7.4 or higher, and MySQL 5.6 or higher. Apache or Nginx is also recommended. Alright, so let's get started. I have a directory all set up, with my text editor open to it. I've also downloaded the current WordPress source code to this WordPress directory. First thing we have to do to get started with Docker, is create a docker-compose.yml file. This is going to be the main configuration file that holds all of the services or containers that we will need for our WordPress site to run. Let's start scaffolding that out. First, we specify the version. We'll use Docker's latest, which right now is 3.9. This isn't really meaningful for what we're doing, but using the latest means that more syntax goodies and other techniques can be available for you to use. After that, we need a services heading. Each item in this section is a container that will be spun up to form our Docker Compose network. For WordPress, we need an Nginx container, a MySQL container, and a PHP container. Under each of these, we specify what they're built with by using this image tag. This pulls an image directly from the Docker Hub, which is essentially a pre-built bundle of an operating system and software. For each of these images, we need a name, followed by a colon, and then a version tag. On Nginx, that's Nginx, then colon, Stable Alpine. Stable, as its name implies, is the latest stable version of the software. The dash Alpine means that its base OS is Alpine Linux, a super lightweight distro that's perfect for containerization of web apps. For MySQL, we'll just use the MySQL latest image. And for PHP, we'll use 7.4, FPM, and Alpine as well, matching the base OS of the Nginx container. Now, this is essentially all that we need to create a full-fledged LEMP stack with Docker and Docker Compose. To bring them up, we just need to go to our terminal in our project root and run Docker Compose up. First, Docker is going to pull the files for all of the images used from the hub, and then it will bring each container up under an umbrella network. That network enables each container to communicate with each other using their service names as host names. And afterwards, any log output will be streamed directly to our console. Okay, it looks like our MySQL container needs some additional configuration. Under our image tag in the MySQL service, let's add environment. 
This expects a key value pair of attributes that will be passed to our image. MySQL expects a few things that we can provide. MySQL underscore database, and for that we'll just use WP. MySQL underscore user, again WP. MySQL underscore password, which we'll just use secret for. And the same with MySQL underscore root underscore password. All right, now if we hit control C to stop the processes of our Docker Compose network, we can run Docker Compose up again and see that everything is working as expected. Our network is just waiting on requests. If we open up a new tab in the same project route, we can run Docker Compose PS, which will output a list of all of the containers in our network, their current status, and their internal ports being used. We can see that Nginx is using port 80, but if we visit localhost in the browser, nothing. Well, that's because that 80 port is the internal port that the Docker container is running Nginx on. It's not exposed to our local machine. Accomplishing that is pretty easy though. First, let's bring everything down with Control C again. And in our Docker Compose file, under the Nginx services image tag, we'll add a new attribute called ports. This expects a list of values corresponding to a port on our local machine tunneled to a port on the Docker container, separated by a colon. So if we supply this with 80 colon 80, then visiting the 80 port on our local host should display whatever would come through the 80 port on the Nginx container. Let's bring everything back up with Docker Compose up, but this time we'll supply the D flag. This stands for detached and essentially tells the Docker Compose network to run in the background instead of keeping a terminal window active and streaming the output of the containers back to us. Refreshing our browser, and we see the Welcome to Nginx page. Perfect, our web server portion is working, but we need to get our WordPress files over to it. Accomplishing that is done with a single line and a new section under our Nginx container, Volumes. A volume in this case, acts like a symlink between the machine running Docker and a Docker container, separated by a colon. The first path we specify is a file or folder on the local machine. In our case, that's the WordPress folder. The second path is the file or folder that we want this to exist at on the container. And in this case, we want it at var www.html. I'm also going to add another colon and the word delegated. This is one of a few options that you can supply to the volume, and it helps speed up response time a little bit on macOS file systems. For more info on exactly what it does, check out the link to the Docker documentation page that I put in the video description. Since this application is also going to be compiled with PHP, I'll provide that container the same volume information as Nginx. Let's restart our container network by running docker compose down and then docker compose up d. And head back to our browser, refreshing the page. Uh oh, we're seeing the exact same view as earlier. This is happening because by default, the Nginx container's root is an at var www.html. It's on a whole different path. Now we could just update our volumes to use that path, but I'd like to instead update our Nginx configuration to use the var www HTML path that we want. In order to accomplish this, we'll have to create a custom Nginx config file. In our project root, let's make a directory called Nginx and a file called default.conf under it. Opening it up, I'm going to scaffold out a basic Nginx configuration for WordPress that's recommended from their documentation. The most important thing here is the root declaration set to var www.html. All right, now that that's saved, we need a way to include it into our Nginx container, replacing the previous config file. No worries, we can just use another volume for that. Taking the file at nginx default.conf and putting it at etc nginx conf.d default.conf. Okay, let's bring our containers down and back up again. And head to the browser to see if our work paid off. Perfect. 
I'm also using this wordpress-docker.test domain now, which all I've done is edit my etc host file, pointing that domain to my local host IP address 127.0.0.1. Okay, we have the WordPress installation screen, so let's go through it. It's asking for our database credentials, which we specified under the environment section of our MySQL container. So let's add those in and hit submit. Ah, another error. This could be because of the database host name. I'm using localhost here, but that's not the actual host of the database to our application. Since each container is a self-contained entity, our PHP container that's running the processes for this WordPress site sees localhost as itself, which there's no MySQL database running on our PHP container. Instead, we can access our MySQL database from one container to another by using the service name specified in the docker-compose.yml file. So in our case, that's just MySQL. Okay, let's try submitting that again. Huh, still the same error. Ah, I know what this is. The PHP container that we're using doesn't contain the MySQL extension by default, so it can't even connect to our database. Let's fix that. Using an image from the Docker Hub, we can't make any modifications to it, like adding additional extensions or software. But instead, we can build the container from our own Docker file. Replacing this image line in our PHP service with build, we can then specify a context, which is the directory to look for our Docker file in, and then an actual Docker file, which we'll just call php.dockerfile. All Docker files have to start with a from. This is what our container will be built off of. We're going to use the exact same image that we were using previously, php 7.4-fpm-alpine. And now we can use a variety of Docker commands to add, modify, or otherwise tweak the software on this container to fit our needs. We need to install and enable the MySQL PHP extension. Luckily, Docker makes this super easy, and we don't have to go through the whole hassle of downloading the extension and modifying our php.ini file. Instead, we can just use the run command, which tells Docker to, well, run a command line program. Then, we can use the handy docker php ext install command, passing in mysql i, pdo, and pdo mysql. After that, we finish it off by including a docker php ext enable call for the PDO MySQL extension. This single line handles the installation and activation of the MySQL and PDO extensions for our PHP container. Let's save this and bring our container network back up. This time, however, we're going to pass in this build flag. Building a container is necessary when we're bringing it up from our own custom Docker files. We could just run docker compose build and then docker compose up, but this simple flag skips that extra step. After this completes, let's head back into our browser, refresh, and try our WordPress installation again. Our database credentials are added in, and it looks like we're good. Let's run the installation. We'll add in some info for our test site and then log into the WordPress dashboard. We're in. All of this running with just a single dependency on our local machine, Docker. We can see that our site is working just as expected. And we can even go in and install plugins. as well as activate them. Adding a new post or page works just fine too. And we can even update the permalinks without any issues.
One thing that I'd like to fix though, is that this local website is insecure. Now that might not matter much, but depending on the work you're doing, you could get console errors or rejection from third-party services if your development site is running over plain HTTP. In order to resolve this, I'm going to use an open source tool that I'm very fond of, MakeCert. What this does is create a local certificate authority on your machine with a single command. Then with another command, you create local SSL certificates against that authority. Using those on your local development websites tricks your browser into thinking they're legitimate. And so you get that little green lock icon instead of invalid certificate notices that you might see with alternative methods. It's available through macOS with Brew, Linux with a couple of different package managers, and Windows through either Chocolatey or Scoop. Once set up, you'll have to run this makecert install command in your terminal. This should only need to be done once and creates a certificate authority for your machine. Then, running makecert with a domain name of your choosing generates the certificates in the current directory. Let's go back into our project and create a directory called certs under nginx. CDing into it through our terminal, we can run makecert wordpress docker.test. And you can see our certificate and key file generated in the same directory. In order to actually use these, we'll have to add them to our Nginx service and update our config file. We could just use another volume, but instead I'm going to opt to create a custom Docker file for our Nginx service. Just like with the PHP Docker file, we'll be building this one off of the same image that we were using before, Nginx Stable Alpine. And we'll remove the image heading for build, context, and Docker file ones under our Nginx service. Now, in our Nginx Docker file, we can use the add command to copy over files from our local machine into the Nginx container. Unlike a volume though, files added this way aren't synced between your system and the Docker container. Any changes made to one or the other won't be available to its counterpart. But things like certificates and config files are perfect for this since they're not really actively developed when working on our site. Okay, now that we have our config file and generated certs coming over, let's open up that config file and set it up for using SSL. We'll just copy this whole server block, change it to listen 443 SSL, and add in the certificate using the path specified in our Docker file. Can't forget the key file either. Last thing to do is make the 443 port accessible to our machine by adding it to the ports section of our Nginx service. All right, let's bring our container network down and then back up. And now let's refresh our site. Okay, we're back to the installation page, so the insecure port is still working fine. Let's try HTTPS. Perfect! Our site is secure thanks to our local certificate from MakeCert. Something to note while we're here. You might notice that since we brought our Docker Compose network down and then back up, that all of our site data is gone. That's because destroying our containers removes all data associated with them, which includes any MySQL databases. If you want to make this persistent instead, it's a pretty quick adjustment. Back in our project, let's add a folder called MySQL to the root directory. And in our docker-compose.yml file under the MySQL service, we have to add a volume. That volume will mount the MySQL directory that we just created to the var lib mysql folder on the mysql container. Since that's where our database's data is written, it will sync to our local folder and then be available whenever we spin down and back up the container network. So now if we refresh everything,
and head into our browser. We can go through the whole installation process again. Create a test post. And then back in our terminal, if we bring down our container network and spin it back up again, refreshing our site, we can see that everything remains the same. We are not taken back to the installation screen to start over fresh again. Okay, the last thing that I'd like to talk about is WP Cli. This is a super handy command line tool that lets you manage WordPress plugins, themes, users, installations, all from your terminal. It's honestly pretty great, and I'd like to use it for our local dev environment. Instead of installing it locally though, we're going to create a new service and use that container to hold all of the dependencies and do all of the work for us. In our docker-compose.yml file, let's add a new service called wp. Because this command line tool runs off of PHP, we're just going to reuse the exact same Docker file that we built the main PHP service off of. Let's add in the same volume. But the main difference with this service is that we're going to use a new attribute called entry point. Entry point takes an array of commands fired off when the Docker container is run. In our case, we need to run the WP command. We also need to add an additional flag to it, and in order to do that, we pass it in as another array element. Allow roots. Now, we need to actually get this tool installed in our container. Opening up the PHP Docker file at the bottom, let's add a new run command. We need to use curl to bring in the WP CLI executable. And then chmod x. And move it to user local bin WP. Now let's bring our container network back up with the build flag and make use of this new container. Instead of using Docker Compose up like we did with Nginx, PHP, and MySQL, we are going to use Docker Compose run. Run takes a service name, in our case, WP, and then after that, any arguments or options that are passed will be passed through to our entry point that we specified. So if we do docker compose run wp user list, it's the same as running wp user list directly in the container. Perfect. We are seeing our single registered user, which is exactly what we'd expect. We can also install and activate plugins. I'm including this rm flag to the docker compose run command which tells docker that after this command exits, we want the container that it ran in to be destroyed. If we left that out, we just have an idle container running showing the last output from the completed command. Also, something quick to add. We should include this depends on attribute to the Nginx container. Specifying the PHP and MySQL service names under this, tells Docker to ensure that those are spun up and ready first before trying to bring the Nginx container up. Since Nginx depends on both of these being available, it can prevent some conflicts from occurring. That's about it for this video. You've learned how to put together a rock-solid foundation for a local WordPress development environment using Docker and Docker Compose. We've created containers that power our WordPress site, manage the database, and perform singular commands with WP CLI.
Huge thanks to my GitHub sponsors, YouTube Elite members, and everyone else who continues to support these videos. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me in the comments or on my Twitter linked below. Thanks for watching.